Hey everyone, I'm here for another video. Today I wanted to get on here and make a video of my early pregnancy symptoms before a missed period and before a positive pregnancy test. So if you look, if you see me looking down, I'm looking at my notepad, my notes of my symptoms that I had. Um, but yeah, we're just gonna jump right into this video. The very first pregnancy sign that I had was actually my sex drive was insane and this is past ovulation usually leading up to ovulation my sex drive does increase obviously because of the hormones and whatnot but usually after ovulation my sex drive completely plummets and this cycle my sex drive was insane and i was not satisfied <laughs> ever so that was the first sign to me and I don't just mean like a little bit extra sex drive. I mean like all day long I was turned on. Uh, sorry if this is TMI by the way, but I feel like pregnancy symptoms are TMI. Um, all day long I was feeling so sexual and even when I would try to take care of that, I would still feel very sexual. Um, so that was the very first sign for me. Aside from that, the second thing that I noticed was actually when I was using the restroom and I had some egg white CM, which if you don't know, you can go ahead and look that up. I'm not gonna get super into it, but it's pretty much your cervical mucus around ovulation time changes where it becomes more like egg whites and more elastic. And that's how my CM was after ovulation, which it's never been like that. So that was another sign to me. I was like, this is really weird. And when I would use the bathroom, I would notice this in my panties. And yeah, sorry if this is TMI as well, but I had never experienced that in any other cycle. Leading up to ovulation, yes, but not afterwards. Then I also experienced something called lightning crotch, which if you don't know what that is, it's pretty much this like zing of sharp pain through your vagina. Um, like so uncomfortable. If you were sitting and you had that, you'd like have to get up. It is one of the most painful things. Think of lightning striking, and that is pretty much exactly how it feels in your crotch at that point. It feels like a lightning blast has just went through my crotch. And that was another sign that I was kind of like, this is really odd because I never experienced that. Um, the last time I experienced lightning crotch was when I was pregnant with my daughter. I don't think I experienced it with my son as much. But my daughter is when I had a very prominent lightning crotch. I was driving and I got this lightning crotch and I was like, oh my gosh, this is so painful. And so with that, that was another thing that I was like, what is going on with my body? The next thing I would say that I experienced was cramping. Um, and this may just seem like a PMS symptom, but for me, I knew it was different because I was cramping like five days before my period and they would come and go but when they would come they were extremely painful cramps like it wasn't like a little cramp that you could ignore it's like a very painful cramp that you're like wow this actually is bothering me and I need to just take a minute for it to pass and I do have cramping before my period usually but it only starts one to two days before my period and this was about five days before my period so my body like I knew my body wasn't getting ready to start a period and so with that I was also like this is very odd I think I may be pregnant um, also excessive tiredness and this wasn't that I was waking up and feeling tired it was that when I would go to sleep I would sleep for 12 plus hours and I am never like that. I'm a morning person usually. As soon as there's light in the sky, my body would just like wake up naturally. And when I wake up, I can never fall back asleep because my body is just ready to go for the day. But this time I was experiencing, like I said, sleeping for like 12 plus hours a night, or I would wake up in the morning after sleeping a full night and go back to sleep until late afternoon, like two, three o'clock in the afternoon which never happens, I never do. So that was another really big sign to me that I could be pregnant. And along with the excessive sleeping, uh, tiredness sleeping, I was also having very lucid dreams and I still am. I have dreams, it feels like a reality. Like I'll go through a dream as an 
as if I was experiencing a day. And when I wake up, I still remember the lucid dreams as if it were like yesterday that this happened, like just my day yesterday. So to me, that was another sign because sometimes I do dream on and off when I'm not pregnant, but I do not have vivid and lucid dreams like this, unless, I guess unless I'm pregnant because just very odd. So aside from that, my thirst increased and that was another sign to me because me, I'm typically a person who I don't have much of an appetite and I really don't get thirsty all that much. I'll maybe have like three drinks, three or four drinks a day. I know that sounds like nothing, but I just am never thirsty really. And especially with water, I do not like the taste of water. But every time I've been pregnant, I love water, cannot get enough of it. I need to drink like gallons of it a day in order to feel satiated and content. And so this did start happening again. I was like so thirsty for water, needing to drink it all day long. And I'm still like that. If I don't drink it, I start getting like really dry mouth and like I need water. <laughs> Where as before, I can just kind of go along with it. It doesn't bother me. And along with the excessive thirst, I've also been excessively hungry, which I usually eat about one to two meals a day. I usually don't have an appetite. I don't feel hungry. It's not me trying to starve myself. I just never have that feeling of being hungry. So I would usually eat one to two meals a day. But in the past couple of weeks, I've noticed I have been so hungry that the moment I wake up, I need to eat. If I don't eat, then my stomach starts hurting it's like an unbearable pain. It's not something that you can ignore, which before it's like, if I'm a little hungry, I'm like, oh, okay, not that big of a deal, not that hungry. But now it's like this hunger like consumes me. <laughs> Along with the hunger, I was having specific cravings before my missed period or before positive pregnancy tests where I would like eat food one day and then I would have to eat it three more days in a row, the exact same thing. And it was mostly meat items like chicken or steak or um, tacos that have the beef in it and whatnot. But I just could not get enough. And then it's like once I had that one time, my body needed it again and again and again. And I would not want anything else. Nothing would sound appealing to me. Nothing would sound good. Um, so that was another thing where I was like, huh, this is weird. And along with that, I would get, I do still get bouts of nausea, but before my missed period, I would get bouts of nausea where it's just like, I really don't feel all that good. And it wasn't like, oh my gosh, I need to throw up, but it's like, I'm just not feeling well. Like I could tell something was off with my body. And another symptom that I was experiencing, and I still am, but I experienced this within the few, within the first few days after ovulating, were smell aversions. Smells bother, certain smells bother me so much, get frustrated and emotion, and I will get actually emotional because of the smells that I'm smelling if I don't like it. So. That's another thing, the scents and everything are a lot more intense. Um, yeah, so also another pregnancy symptom for me was getting emotional. And I do get this way usually after I ovulate, but it's not so much like me crying and then happy, crying because a song is playing like Ariana Grande's Thank You Next. I literally cried to that song every single time I listened to it, like my eyes would just start tearing up and I would start crying just from hearing the song and the words for about five days straight. And I was just like, this is odd because <laughs> it's a song, like, come on. Or I'd see something on TV and I'd start crying and I'm just like, this is really weird. I'm not usually this emotional. If it's PMS, I usually am very tired, cranky, like my emotions go into this like negative mindset after I ovulate, if I'm not pregnant. But for me, it was kind of like all over the place. Um, crying was the biggest thing that I could notice that was different because I'm not all that emotional. So that was something. Another symptom that I experienced was increased urination, which 
again i'm thinking that goes hand in hand with the increased thirst so obviously i'm drinking more have to use the bathroom more but i'm one of those people who i can hold my pee all day long and i know that may <laughs> weird some people out or you may think that's not healthy that's just my body i usually do not have to pee which i think is because i usually don't drink that much liquid but now it's like every few hours i have to pee and if i don't go to the bathroom i will feel like i'm actually about to pee myself like it becomes painful for me if i don't go and use the restroom every few hours so that's another very prominent sign for me something completely different than my body usually is and acts like so there's that and then i also was experiencing breast fullness which i am a mom i've had two other babies and i have breastfed before so i don't have that big of boobs my boobs are just they're mom boobs so if you're a mom you know what i'm talking about i have mom boobs and within the few days after ovulating i was looking at myself in the mirror and in the shower and i was just like hmm this is different my boobs are definitely fuller and bigger and they weren't so much sore or painful, which now that I have missed my period and I have gotten that positive pregnancy test, my boobs have become a lot more sore. They are continuing to grow. I feel like every few days they're a little bit bigger and my nipples are incredibly sore now. But before my missed period, my nipples were not that sore. There were not any... The signs were not that prominent, except I know what my mom boobs look like and they're they changed. So... I could kind of tell that was a lot different and um, the other thing was having this like heaviness and fullness in my lower abdomen not like bloating or anything but I kind of like I honestly knew I was pregnant because I felt as if there was something inside of me as if I had life inside of me which is kind of weird because I really don't know how to describe that symptom all that well, but I could tell that it was not just my body anymore. Like I could tell there was more than just me and I had this fullness, heaviness. Like I could tell that there was something inside of me. I think those are all of my early pregnancy symptoms before a missed period and before a big fat positive. It was a lot different this cycle for me and I was not trying to conceive. I was actually trying to conceive this time last year, but actually stopped about April. And so I have not been trying to conceive that whole, this whole time. But when I was trying to conceive, I remember being like, huh, is this a pregnancy symptom? Is this a pregnancy symptom? You know, kind of overanalyzing every single thing about my body and how I would feel and whatnot. After ovulation, this cycle, not even trying i just knew i was pregnant i would tell like i was telling myself like you're pregnant like i knew i was pregnant and that sounds really odd but i just knew so that was kind of weird for me i was like wow i'm actually pregnant and i kind of knew i knew it even though at the same time i was i was like nah this you know i i'm i'm not or no, I was trying to like find a reason for the symptoms, even though like deep down I had this gut feeling that I was pregnant. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope it was informative. I hope this has been helpful for you and has kind of helped you spot your symptoms and see, huh, am I having any of these symptoms? Could I be pregnant as well? But um, yeah, that's really all I have for this video. I am currently four weeks and three days pregnant i believe i got my positive my first positive at 10 dpo which was very early but like i said i knew i was pregnant because i was having all of these signs and i even had tested i tested eight dpo and it was negative and i kind of just went with believing that even though i knew the egg the embryo can implant between or the egg can implant in between day six and day 12 after ovulation, but typically the healthy eggs implant on eight DPO, 
Um, I had done a lot of research and all these different studies and whatnot that I actually found out if the egg is implanting before that date or after that date, then there's a higher chance of miscarriage, um, which I thought was interesting. But so the egg implants typically on 8 DPO and I knew that testing on 8 DPO, not a very high chance that I would get a positive even if I was. But I kind of took that and was just like, all right, I'm not pregnant. So I did not test on 9 DPO. And then 10 DPO I tested. And I actually took the test and went back in bed, laid down. I was like, you know what? This is not even going to be positive. I was just kind of like, I took it. It's going to be negative again. And then I was going to go back to sleep. But it takes a little bit to fall back asleep. So I was like, okay, well, I'm still awake. I may as well just go look at the test. It's going to be negative. That's what I was telling myself. And I looked at it and there was a very, very, very faint positive. And I was just like, oh my gosh. I honestly could not believe it. I went and bought more pregnancy tests, tested with my afternoon urine, and I did get another positive. And I was just like, wow. So I guess this is really happening. I'm pregnant with baby number three. But let me grab, I'll show you guys my first positive test. This is on 10 DPO. Let's see if it'll actually focus on this. If not, I can always insert a picture. But my 10 DPO was very faint. And so, yeah, I don't know. So that's, that's, I got my first positive on 10 DPO and the line has gotten dark each day since then. I am still kind of testing just because I am a little bit in disbelief. But at the same time, I want to make sure that the line is progressing so just because this is so unexpected and because I don't know I feel like it's so surreal that for me anyways it feels so surreal that I keep testing I'm like is this baby still in me am I still pregnant um just kind of a shock to me but yeah so those are the symptoms that I had before my missed period before a BFP I'm four weeks and three days if you guys would like to see my pregnant belly, even though there's not really any belly at this point. Here is that. So four weeks and three days pregnant. And yeah, I hope this video was informative and helped you guys. And I will just see you in my next video. Bye.